After six months of growing excitement since being lucky enough to draw another Wapiti ballot, we were off, exploring into our favourite corner of the country. Our first stop was in Twizel for a quick fish and catch up with our mate Reddy, who was three months into the TRR trail. He was pretty quick to sacrifice his dry boots to help land a tasty wee salmon. Yeah boy! Yeah boy! How good! Nice! Nice! Our second stop was around a golf in the beautiful Arrowtown. Don't ask how many shots we had to film before getting a straight one on camera. Oh my god, he's fizzled it. After trashing our mate Mark's house whilst doing our last gear check and making sure we had everything we needed for 10 days in the bush, we are off for an early night, eager for the morning. This was to be our second time hunting the Mount Tanilba Wapiti block. The other hunting party we were sharing the block with were happy enough to let us explore the other end of the block we had an adventure into last year. We'd planned to drop over half our gear with some added luxuries down in the main Two Thumb Valley, whilst getting ourselves dropped up high in order to hunt the tops for the first few days. Before we knew it, we were here. Six months of preparing, planning and excitement finally brought to life. Beauty! <laughs> here we go. Back here again! We spent a good few hours finding and preparing a sheltered campsite as we knew there was heavy rain and wind forecast for the coming days. Fjordland's pretty famous for being unforgiving to those who are unprepared. Happy with our new home, we were off to watch some bush lines close to camp to see what we could find in the evening. Two bagels each. Cream cheese on them already. Bloody delicious. Let's get into it. Smoked at the local Tiana Butchery. Bloody Thanks, delicious. Mr. Butcher. Are we gonna? I don't know, it's gonna come from there. Oh, yeah, I don't know, probably not. Just followed our first year of the trip. Nice reed of hind down there. And uh, what is that? What does that mean, Sandy? Yeah. Means you're cooking dinner. As forecast, we woke up to a classic field and day. Our time and effort setting up camp the day prior proved its worth as we managed to stay dry. <laughs> this is our Saturday. Our cheeky mate, Bordy the Wicker, offered us plenty of entertainment and kept us on our toes. One of Chris's crocs even went walkabouts for a day. What are you doing, Baldy? Oi! Day three of our Wapiti hunt. Got a reasonably clear day today. Scrambled eggs of brekkie, beautiful. How are we feeling this morning, Chris? Ready to shoot something. Ready to shoot something. <laughs> Let's go. To 
despite the blisteringly cold winds, we were eager to get exploring, and it wasn't long before we spotted our first animal. Hines kicking around beneath us, we're expecting the bull around every corner. Although not as close as we thought, we found the first bull of the trip. He's no monster yet, given a few more years and he might be something pretty special. One to look out for, eh? Pretty hard yakker along some steep country. It's time for a well earned feed. Looks like we weren't the only hungry ones. So we come a ways from over there, along this ridge line, hoping to get up into this basin and she's bloody clagged in. But, what have we heard, mate? Well, I heard a few roars down in the bush, so hopefully we decided we'll leave the head basin for another day. Hopefully it clears up and we'll <laughs> start doing some bush talking and see what we can get onto for the evening. Drop down and hopefully get them going. Yeah, it'll be lovely. A bit of a shame about the head basin, but oh, we'll be back. We'll be back, mate. <laughs> Alright, to the bush. Unfortunately, we didn't hear from him again, but we knew what ridge he was on, so we could come after him another day. This is day four mountain hill block. We the forecast is for Sleep 700 meters and southwest to 50 k's an hour. So we're pretty happy to just be chilling in the camp and staying dry. Cause it's horrible out there. <laughs> this guy's a bit of a freak. He's making a hard ass for his camera. Sorry. He's fine. Fucking you! Wow. <laughs> Good job. The same way, well, she's in the way, though. They're super cold, windy temps tomorrow, so we're gonna rest. Urgent weather message. <laughs> oh, wow. Whilst we were enjoying our early taste of winter, we had no idea what was going on back home, but that pesky wee virus we'd heard was spreading through China before we left. A lot can change in four days. We've just found out that now Wildy Hunt's over. 
because this coronavirus has got the whole country in lockdown and we need to get flown down the next weather window. Absolute bull Cannot believe what we've just found out. I guess we're gonna pack up super early tomorrow morning, four in the morning, something stupid like that, and try and get a boat on the last day of the hunt. Yeah. <laughs> just, <laughs> Which yeah. has now been cut five days short. Yeah. But it'd make a cool story if we could get a big boat, wouldn't it? Fucking <laughs> <laughs> It's probably about minus two or minus three out here. It's bloody cold. But the good news is the bulls have started bugling out of nowhere. So we're gonna give it one last shot today and hopefully get onto the bull that's bugling below us. Hey Mitchie. Yeah, bloody plan. Oh. Excited. You can see what they got going, it's bloody cold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, after this will be off. When we felt the wind touch the back of our necks, we dropped off the easy stalking ridge in an attempt to circle around beneath them. This made the stalking difficult as the forest floor was littered with twigs, ready to break and give away our position with each footstep. Without the ridge line to follow, the stalking was made near impossible by the thick bush and steep terrain. This just shows how wise these bulls can get, which just adds to how excitingly out of hunt. About 10 metres away from the ridge line, we heard one last thud, the unmistakable sound of a failed stalk. We were left thinking about what could have been as we explored his rutting pad, marvelling at the scrapings well above our head. Day 5 saw us up well before first light, packing up all of our gear so that we were prepared for our pickup scheduled for 3pm. This meant that we could use our last chance to hunt hard and explore the head basin beneath Mount Tanilba. We planned to use every last second, always hoping for that last chance bull. Unfortunately for us, Fjordland had other ideas, throwing more average weather our way. Determined to ignore that our hunt was effectively over, we carried on anyway. That was until we heard the distant hum of a helicopter. It is a helicopter. Hmm? It is a helicopter. We quickly checked our Garmin in reach to discover our pickup time had been brought forward from 3pm to 11am, which left us only two hours to navigate the steep ridge line back to our gear. <laughs> <laughs> He's not happy. So the weather has deteriorated and our pickup time has gone from 3 pm to 11 am. It's now just on the truck a minute ago. So let's say once they do that load, they're going to come for us. And that basin. 
person up there. It's still going to be a mystery, which is awful. We're pretty upset about that. <laughs> He's not happy. He's worked up. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I can take up golf again. <laughs> right. What's the chat, Mitch? So, third back from the helicopter company. Probably not getting out today at this stage. <sighs> so, we're going to have to set the tent all back up and. Hunker down. Yeah, we got the news a few hours ago that we needed to get back. We've rushed back. <laughs> only, to, only for it to clag in again. So, yeah, we're chilling out here again. So we might be here for another day. Um, have no idea what's going on with the coronavirus at the moment. Mm. Glad is the whole to. country going into lockdown today? I guess it is. Um, so we're going to be coming out tomorrow, so yeah. hopefully Macca's is open. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I care about. Fucking Macca's in a Red Bull, please. Beautiful. The next two days were spent tent bound, waiting for a weather window so we could get picked up. This allowed us plenty of time to reflect on our experience in the bush and wonder about the what ifs. In the end, we were just bloody happy we had the chance to get our field and fix, although hungrier for next year. We also wondered about the state of the world. What were we returning to? Are the roads open? Can we even drive home? And how are our loved ones handling all of this? So we've woken up to an absolute pooler every day again. Same as the day we flew in. Not a cloud in the sky, just bloody gorgeous. Helicopter is on its way. It's gonna suck leaving all this good weather behind, but I suppose we're finally out and we can finally know what the hell's going on in New Zealand or the world, to be honest. <laughs> it's been a hell of a time to go away. See you later, few of them. Hopefully next year. Just want to say a big thank you to Field and Helicopters for their clear communication and getting this out through these weird times. Also want to give a huge thank you to the Field and Wafty Foundation for all the work they put into the area. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed, please hit that subscribe button. And hopefully next year we can get some bills on camera, eh? After six weeks of sitting inside during lockdown, our next episode shows us the hunt we were highly anticipating, chasing some red stags in Canterbury High Country. It's just like